to our show when we get back home? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So we're going to basically just finish them all on tape here. We're, no, we're going to pretend like we're doing it live. But it's just not going to be seen. Right. Yeah. So, so we can get people when they're when not going to be Whatever you want. You, whatever's going to make it easier for you, Mike. Well, let me see. I'm going to make sure you got I lost my pen. You know, I think it's on my. I'm going to put it to the hard drive in there. Every school in the state of Delaware blocks um, RF channels, so you cannot send anything live out from inside the school. Like if a point no broke out or wh whatever, they can't send it. where you're doing a game, you can't use their internet. No. So we have to use ours. Have to use that's it. why we always have to use ours. Yeah, and, and with this broken, I mean, with it's, not, it's not our fault. No, it's not. NIFTA is not our fault. It's not your fault. It's like they should have known. It's like they just set it up for, they had the media up all morning and all that for playing around the league. Why couldn't they get it to us? thought they gave it to us. Yeah, we thought we had it. I just feel so bad, but it sounds like he might be okay with it. So. Yeah, well, we, we went to another, we went to the Cube, and we were trying to show you live to the Cube. Did we, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, it's still recording, guys. So oh, we got to turn that on game end. And my not, the light's not on. No, on here it's recording. Oh. There you go, right there. That's good, guys. Hey, I thought the light's off. We're good. Testing, testing. Can you hear me? Nope. I can hear you. You can hear me. You son of a... There you go. I can hear you. There you go. Can you hear me? I just didn't turn you up high enough. Hey, Jason. Um, unfortunately, folks, we were unable to get on the internet here at Cape Penlope, and so we're recording this. We're not able to go live. Uh, my name's Leonard Evans from 302 Sports. I'm here with my partner, Jason Winchell. Yes. Uh, Len, it's a good day here at Cape Penlope. Uh, we were here for the volleyball play day. Uh, slash preview show by 302 Sports. Show. We're going to have a action-packed show for you today with uh, live interviews, uh, teams to, uh, schedules, uh, games to watch this year, our top ten teams, and uh, a lot of volleyball action. So it's going to be a great day here at Cape Henlopen. And uh, it has already been a great first couple hours here in this in this uh, school. Yeah, unfortunately, like I said, we were unable to uh, get on the internet here at Cape Penlope, and they block the live streaming apps inside the school. So uh, we're going to record it and uh, get as much of the action as we possibly can, um, do our top tens, and um, talk about the schools and the interviews that we've got thus far. Yes. Um, Mike Lang will be joining us any moment. He's going to find our next coach and player for interviews. Yes, and uh, this year, Thank as, you. It, as it came right into our uh, living room. Right, right into here, our living room, yeah. Uh, Len, this year is going to be one of the most competitive years of in, in volleyball. Teams outside of our top ten can win it this year. Uh, for example, DMA, the two-time defending champ, they graduated five of their six starters. They have a new coach, but so it might take them a while to get on. So, but they can come on at the end of the year. And the three conferences we're going to watch out for this year are the Catholic Conference, the Diamond State Conference, and the Independent Conference. I think 12 or 14 of the playoff teams are going to come from those three conferences. So those conferences are jam-packed with some great teams this year. And that, right now we have uh, Ursuline versus Cape 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 Lopen. The home, the home squad here. Yeah, Ursuline is in the white. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they're, they're not wearing uniform numbers, but t-shirts today since it is a uh, scrimmage. A uh, play day scrimmage. Yep. Yeah, they're not keeping track of points. They're just playing. they play for uh, I believe 25 minute increments or 20 minute increments, and they're going to play that way. Um, and then we're going to go from there. So uh, it's a it's a good day here. We got like I said, Len. There's uh, ten teams, nine teams here today. Uh, Ursuline, Cape Town Open, Newark Charter, Conrad, Wilmington Friends, um, 
and a bunch of other teams, Tower Hill, Tattnall. So we're loaded with teams. And, and Mike, here comes Mike Lang, who will take over with the duties of uh, commentating. I'm going to be your producer, so I'll pass this off to Mike. I am now, I am now joined by Mike Lang, and uh, we have a couple uh, DMA volleyball players here that are uh, – All right, Jason, we're joined by Jen Johnson and Nina Tindall from Delaware Military Academy. We're going to throw the headsets on them. So technical difficulties always the rule of the day, right? Jen, I think we'll start with you. And uh, just we're going to look over this way. Nina, you're the next victim. Is this supposed to be? You're good. We can yeah, hear good. just fine. Let me get my cheat sheet ready. So I think good. we're good to go at any time, right? Am I looking at you? No, you can look at the camera. Nobody wants to okay. look at me. <laughs> All right, Jen. So you spent the last four years, I believe, at Newark? Newark High School, yeah. And you come into DMA, and no pressure. They've just won two straight state championships. Uh, how's that? Um, for you, it's an, I'm sure it's an exciting opportunity, but also maybe a little bit um, – daunting it is daunting uh, and that's the word that everybody says you know no pressure no pressure um, but you know as soon as I took the job in in February I've been working really hard um, contacting the girls working with the girls uh, got them involved in clinics this summer um, you know they were in open gym all summer so I feel like we had a true leg up in August when we started preseason and, um, you know, I knew them, I knew their personalities, and, you know, ready to, to take on the season. A lot of starters, grad five starters maybe graduated. Nina might be the only returning starter. Uh, tell us some of your new faces. Who's going to replace all of that talent that's, that's gone? Uh, we have six seniors, um, so strong uh, leadership on the court right now. Um, Carrie Fitzgerald, uh, Ali Novotny um, play an important role in the back row. Uh, Emmett Aldisek is a strong, powerful middle along with Nina, so they're my two towers up front. Um, Jackie's returning. She played on the team last year as well. Um, some girls I brought up were a freshman, Riley Sullivan, who right from the start, uh, great communication, great leadership, um, smart player. Uh, we also brought up a um, sophomore, Allie Banks, who is an excellent all-around player, setter. Um, so she's um, been proven really strong in the front row and works well with Lexi as well, uh, so my other setter. A lot, of, a lot of players and a lot of confidence, too? A lot of confidence on the team. Um, I think, you know, what this team has is a lot of great players, where last year we had – you know, some shining stars, and, um, you know, the team kind of depended on, you know, a couple people in particular, where this team is very well-rounded, very hard workers, um, and I feel confident I can put anyone in to do the job. Diamond State got even stronger this year with the additions of uh, Red Lion and Wilmington Charter, uh, and other some new teams also, but those two in particular. You also have, uh, you're at Paddle this year, uh, at Ursuline, at Smyrna, and you have St. Mark's coming in as your non-conference schedule. Yes. Uh, so that's really a, a pretty demanding uh, slate of games, you know, or matches. Um, I guess you're used to playing that level of comp At the MA, they're used to playing that level of competition. Yeah, they are. And, you know, I, I grew up in Delaware, so I, I played at Ursuline. And, you know, I know the level of expectation. Um, you know, I've watched – Delaware High School Volleyball for the past 20 years. So I know the coaches. I know coaching styles. I used to work at Padua as the freshman coach and assistant coach. Uh, so, you know, I, I am very familiar with this level of play. And you're excited to get started your, uh, at your brand-new place of employment, huh? I can't wait. It's, it's been great. So I love the girls, uh, love their attitudes, um, and just love the level of, you know, competitiveness right now. Well, enjoy your season, and we'll run into you, I'm sure, down the line. Great. And Thank thanks you. Thanks for sitting and doing this with us. Thanks a lot.
almost dead there. <laughs> All right, Nina. All right, Nina, thanks for joining us today. Uh, you are one of the seniors this yes. year. Um, you guys had an incredible ride the last two years at, at DMA. How do you keep that, that wave going this year? Uh, we're just going to keep the energy up, keep pushing. Like, we lost a lot of our starters, but, like, our whole team is, like, we're all good. We all have faith that we can do it. We just have to work hard and keep, like, the mindset that we can do it. I don't know if you had to be a leader in the past, but you're going to need to step up, I imagine, this year and kind of be the, the calming voice and the, and, the, and the captain out there. Uh, has that been a, a, a new role for you, or have you done that elsewhere? Um, in club, I used to, but like not in DMA because like all the other seniors. Mm -hmm. But I'm up for the challenge. It's after last season, you knew all those those players were going. Did you guys sit back and go, oh, "Man, what's going to happen now?" Or are you like, "Hey"? Let's start again with a new group. Is that kind of what you're? Yeah, we all worked really hard in the summer to get back going because we wanted to stay strong and not just slump down. And uh, how are your new teammates? You got some players up from JV, I imagine, some new faces. Uh, you are excited, ready to go? I'm super excited for this season. I have a lot of faith in our team. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming by, and good luck this season. I'm sure we'll run into you at some point. Thanks. Thanks. So that was Nina Tyndall. Nina Tyndall, a senior for DMA. And hey, Mike, uh, I'm back Jen here Johnson, with Mike. And we're back with Jason Winchell. And uh, we are here doing the the play day here at Cape Penlope. We just heard from DMA. Uh, they are going to be the two-time defending state champions. Uh, they graduated a lot of players, but Jen Johnson seems confident that they will compete. And like I said earlier with Len Evans, this year anybody in our top ten can has a chance at not making the tournament. So I mean, has a chance of winning the state tournament. So it, it's it's a wide open year. Yeah, Jason, I've been getting my steps in running around here at Cape Penlope, and so I missed a little bit of what you guys talked about. Um, but we are back. Maybe we're gonna so yeah, unfortunately, uh, the best laid plans sometimes don't happen, but we appreciate everybody's understanding here at Cape Hemlope, and they've been uh, very uh, accommodating with us, and we still have a few more teams to bring in before we're done today. Like we said right now, uh, Cape Hemlope is playing Ursuline right here in, in uh, the action. And uh, we almost took one right in the face there. We knocked the lens cover off, but I think we're good. Did you see my pancake there? I got that one. It was awesome. Yeah, like we said, we're right. That ball came right into our living room. So here. my my left hand is going to be on the show, huh? It that wasn't was a awesome. very good block by you, but that's another story. Well, that's the Ursuline Raiders down there. State finalists last year, uh, five sets against DMA it was a fantastic uh, final last year. And Ursuline, we talked to uh, Sue Heiss. Oh, we're going to talk to Sue Heiss. We later are going to talk to Sue Heiss. And then it's always expectations for the for the Raiders. Yeah, they're always a good team, and, and Cape has been playing battling tough here. <laughs> we are uh, in the line of fire here today. Yes. So, uh, Mike, uh, let's look at some of the uh, important uh, games to uh, watch this year. Um, I know one of them um, is early in the season: um, Archmere and Wilmington Charter. Uh, early September. Yeah, so. Wilmington Charter moving to the Diamond State. Yeah, uh, that's not easy, but uh, Coach Stover is confident that his players are going to be able to get it, to compete at that level. They're, they're moving from the bigger conference, really, with Flight A. Uh, Size-wise, they are moving to uh, a smaller conference. <laughs> but volleyball-wise, they are taking a huge step up. But they have been very competitive over the past few years. And I believe that's one of our a few years ago. And I believe that's one of our 302 sports games this year. So uh, that's uh, check your local list on the on our website. But I believe we will be at when we can charge. I'm wondering what we did to Ursuline to uh, deserve this. Yeah, Ursuline is this kind uh, of treatment is taking fire at us uh, here today. There goes uh, Alyssa Fayville, one of our guests today. 
And what for that comrade uh, Red Wolves, another member of that Diamond State Conference. Here's another one. And uh, they're just, I, th I think the Cape girls are enjoying this. Yeah, they are turning around and laughing at our athletic ability back here. To Lack of. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So you're looking at Ursuline. Like I said, we're going to have Sue Heiss on, and, and we talked to uh, Sam Davis, and uh, they bring back a lot of talent for Ursuline. We, we can discuss them with Sue when they're here. Uh, kind of surprised me last year. I, th I thought they had an excellent team. I thought maybe they were a year away from getting back to the final. Uh, just a couple years ago, they missed the tournament. So yes. uh, she brought them back in, a, in, a, in no time. And last year, their, their game of the – I think their match of the year was in the quarterfinal against um, – Padua. They lost twice to them in the regular season and won the quarterfinal match and uh, got, got strong, beat Archmere, got some revenge on Archmere also in the semifinals. And like you said, Mike, they fell a little short against DMA, but it was a great uh, uh, run there for them. So, Jason, we have a lot of teams here today. One conference not represented is Blue Hen. Uh, St. George's is here. They have moved up this year from Flight B to Flight A. We will have Charity Hart, the coach from St. George's, and uh, Jessica Charlier on with us. But let's look at, at some of the, the other flight, uh, hen looping, I'm sorry, blue hen flight, flight B. Yes, flight B, we have. Uh, St. George's was the automatic qualifier, but they are not in flight B anymore. No. Who should we be looking for for flight B? Well, flight B, um, Mount Pleasant and AI went down. AI did make the tournament last year, but they graduated a few seniors, so it's gonna be interesting to see if they can move down and they can hold on a flight B title. Oh, Look at Brandywine. They had a decent record. And I believe four last year. Dickinson. Dickinson also had a very good record last year. So you might be looking at Dickinson or Brandywine being able to sneak into the uh, into the tournament. You must finish, I believe, with a 500 record to get the automatic bid. Yes, you have to finish with the over 500 record for the automatic bid, and then it's based off of points, your seeding. Uh, 24 teams make the state tournament. And here it comes again. Nice play by Len Evans on that one. So flight B. Uh, the way when we talked about this, I think on our way down yesterday to Lewis, the top teams all play the top teams. It seems like, and they try. You know, it's hard for sometimes for those play big teams to get games against the two-point bonus. That's why. Teams. That's why their conference games are important because if they can win that conference and get you get in. that you get that auto bid. Um, Brandywine and. Dickinson, like you said, each had 11 wins last year and couldn't get in because St. George's edged them out in the Flight B Conference. So. And you look at a team like Sanford last year, almost got into the tournament, and I believe they had uh, four, four, wins. four wins in the season. So the scheduling is important. I believe we're in the first year of the two-year cycle. So we mentioned the uh, Flight B coming downstate, Henlope and South. Yeah, it's you're been Delmar the last few years. Delmar is your defending champs, and then they got in the first round and, and took out St. Thomas Moore before falling to Ursuline, I believe. Yes, that was at Brandywine High School. They so, graduated about five seniors, I believe, though, Delmar. So. Yes, um, so I would look for maybe Lake Forest and uh, Woodbridge to make runs there. Uh, and, they can, and Sussex Academy. Don't rule out Sussex Academy. Uh, a new program, but they had uh, – Six wins last year. So we're just watching Ursuline in the white and Cape Henlopen in the black shirts. Just taking a look at the schedule here. They're going to be here till about uh, for another few hours. We're going to interview the, team, the players. We're going to bring them in as we can get them. So we are just about ready to wrap this session up in another minute or so. Who's next on this court, Mike, at 11th? This is court one would be Cape and Delaware Military Academy, who's sitting down in the corner to your right, if you can see them on the monitor. And then we're going to go track down, I believe, Newark Charter. We're going to have Newark Charter, and if I can go find Jess Weller and Abby Carbohall. So we're kind of a uh, our schedule is kind of going by the wayside here, but we're doing what we can. Yeah, technical difficulties earlier in the day, but we are up and running, and uh, we're going to try and bring you the best show that we can. Uh, a lot of interviews have been pre-recorded. We did. Uh, we were at the Friends Play Day last year, or last weekend rather, and recorded uh, interviews with uh, five or six teams. Um, so. 
Uh, yeah, five or six teams. and uh, We'll have those on during the show tonight. I believe Ursuline is – Don, do they play again? Because if not, maybe we can get Sue Heiss over here right now. They do not. Let me, let's see if we can track down Sue. She's going to talk to her team for a second. We're going to get Sue Heiss. And uh, she can't wait to do this. <laughs> yeah, this is this is her favorite time of the year, and she's a great coach, Mike. She's been coaching. She Ur coached Jen Johnson. Yes, as Jen said earlier, she played at Ursuline, and Ursuline's won so many state championships in the early years with Sue Heiss as the coach. So Sue has uh, Ursuline has eleven championships, and Sue has been the coach for ten of them, uh, the most by any head coach in in Delaware history. Uh, Ursuline's last title was in 2009, believe it or not. It's hard to believe it's been that long. But uh, since then, it was the St. Mark's for two years, Padua for two years, Archmere, and then DMA for two years. Yeah. So she's going to try to turn that around. And you know you're at the beach, Jason, when somebody's got their beach chairs out on the court here. Absolutely. And it's a good day down here for the beach. It is not too hot today. We were out there for the field hockey earlier today, and it was uh, not too bad out there, so... They're Good still going, set. by the way. The field hockey players are out there, I believe, uh, going on five hours now. No, no I'm sorry, about uh, three and a half hours. They start at 8 o'clock. Yeah. So, unfortunately, we had planned to bring this to you live. Uh, oh. But we, you know, technical difficulties, and you, I'm sure you and Leonard uh, mentioned that. But sometimes live is not really the best thing, so. Yeah, and like I said, we'll still have everything that we plan to bring you today. We're bringing you now, so. Just a little different order, that's all. And with Sue's court going the other way, so we're going to have to go track her down so we can bring Sue Heiss in. They yes. reached the final last year, and they fell to uh, DMA. Honestly, I surprised uh, Ursuline. I'm not surprised because they were talented, but. Like I said, I thought they were maybe a year away. They are. They're pretty good this year. So, did we talk about any of the teams that are not here? Do we want to we, bring them up, or we just well, since you bring up Ursuline and we're going to try and get Sue Heiss on, let's talk about St. Mark's and Padua, uh, also members of the Catholic Conference. Uh, Padua brings back probably one of the best players in the state of Delaware, and Emily Jerome. They also bring back Emma Lucy, Jess Mullen. Uh, they do have to replace Maddie Judge, Mike, who is at University of Delaware and was their key libero last year. Uh, you talked to the coach last week. What do you? What? How have they found a replacement for her yet? Well, they have. They have somebody in, in um, D. Lauren D. Sabatino, I believe, mentioned it during our interviews, which we can run here and uh, let. But they have um, a freshman. Uh, Mackenzie Subject, I believe, is. Well, I'm trying to remember who their setter was. I'd have to look at the roster. Emma, Emma Lucy. Lucy's going to be setting. She set it. She was the setter last year, and she's back. So I would believe. Makes, I meant the libero. Um, I'm not positive who's going to be playing back there in the. Uh, I think last week she said it's still up for grabs. That's why I was bringing that up. That I don't think. Uh, it's not set in stone yet. Yeah, not. I talked to DSAB last week, and we have not spoken uh, since. So. Here's another one, boom, right at us. We're gonna find out this is the firing line back here. The paddle, which I know what Lauren did mention is that they are extremely tall. They have a great front line. Uh, expect great defense from Padua. And uh, there's not gonna be many teams in Delaware that are gonna match them when it comes to height. So right. she's excited about, about the amount of height that they have. I think she said they have four players that are 5'11 or, or taller. So. They it's have to be an imposing front line, right? They, but they have to replace that all all states libero, um, Maddie Judge. Yeah, Maddie playing for uh, University, University of Delaware, of Delaware. so playing for a Division One school. Um, she's not going to be easy to replace, but like you said, pa it's Padua, and uh, they can play some defense. Um, and then let's talk about St. Mark's, Mike. Uh, two players to watch out for this year. Aaron Derrick, our interview subjects, Aaron Derrick and Savannah Siemens, uh, both hitters. Aaron is a senior, Savannah is a uh, sophomore. Uh, St. Mark's last season, 9-6 in the regular season. And then they, they, uh, made, they had a bye in the first round. They lost to Wilmington Charter in the second round. 
uh, but they have a veteran team to bring back. Of course, you mentioned Derek and Siemens, uh, Jill Lytle, and the two Graces, Grace Frady and Grace Sawyer. So they've got some experience, and they have uh, one of the better coaches in the state, Nancy uh, Griskowitz, who manages to get everything out of that team. Even as they don't have as many girls as they used to have, she's managed to keep that volleyball program in the upper echelon in, in the Catholic Conference, which uh, for my money is probably conference number two strength-wise this season. Yeah, they, ha they had a growth last year, Mike. Uh, the year before, they were 7-8, and eight, and they jumped up to 11. Like I believe you said 11 wins last year. 9-6. No, 9-6. Nine nine so they jumped up to 9 wins. They play a brutal schedule. Yes, really brutal there. and, and, and are, it's early. They are traveling, uh, in addition to Padua and Ursuline, they're at Friends, at DMA, at Red Lion, and at Newark Charter. So that's some, some tough ones. They are home against St. George's and Smyrna, and Archmere goes down there this year. And they get a chance for uh, to make up for that Wilmington Charter uh, playoff loss. They had Wilmington Charter later in the season. So it's going to be a uh, never an easy night. For uh, for the Spartans, yeah, and li like we said, I believe their schedule is tough early. I believe they open with uh, friends um, or in Padua somewhere in the first four games in Smyrna, so that's tough, uh, tough climb. Uh, and we went to Smyrna yesterday, and they looked really good. So that's gonna be a good team to watch out for this year. Yeah, we will uh, have, we will see the interview with uh, Coach Dan Wanless, and we talked to. Reese Trabato and Morgan Holman. So, yeah, and they're super psyched down there at Smyrna, and they were 12 and three last year. They did look really good, and they probably played the best match of the year last year in, in the playoffs, where they lost to uh, Tatton in five sets. That was I was at I was there that night. 15 13 in that fifth set, and I was impressed by the match that I saw there that night. So. Yeah, we called we talked to Coach Wanless yesterday, and. Uh, about that, that match, and it's a tough pill for them to swallow, but make that team better. And, you know, Smyrna is really carrying the uh, <laughs> carrying the torch for the Henlopen North, along with uh, Cape Henlopen, but it's really been Smyrna's drive the last two years. We're getting uh, pelted by DMA, so if nobody's worried about DMA's hitters, yes. they can still hit. At what time does this start, 11? 11? 11.35, so, so we'll have some volleyball action. We'll go find another uh, coach and another victim player to come on over and, and chat with us. I believe we're going to uh, track down Newark Charter, if I'm not mistaken. Newark Charter and, Urs and Ursland. And Ursland, correct. Uh, we still got still here from St. George's and Tower Hill also coming up later today. So we got to, like I said, it's an action-packed day, and we still have to unveil our top ten later in the day. So it's a busy day here at uh, Cape Hell Open, and because we got the late start, we'll probably be here a little later than we first anticipated. I mean, no, so, a long day in Lewis beats a long day in a lot of other places, it's, unless you're stuck on Route 1. Right. If you're stuck on Route 1, it's it could be a long day if getting from Rehoboth to Dewey. <laughs> Anywhere. <laughs> so uh, we're getting ready for some action here between DMA and Cape Hen Open. DMA, the two-time defending state champs that we talked about earlier, and uh, Cape Hen Open. And we want to thank Cape Hen Open for letting us come down here today. Tyler Coop, their head coach, um, is a great guy, and he's got this program heading in the right direction down here. And they beefed up their schedule this year, and then Archmere's making a trip down here. And, you know, Tyler mentioned that in the interview, and we, we Tyler and I have known each other a long time. We talked about that when he when he took this job, that to get better, they had to schedule better, and, and they, they travel, and uh, they have teams who, you always have teams willing to come down here and play. It's not hard to get a team to come, to agree to come down and play here in Lewis, especially early in the season. If they can make it on a weekend, you can make it a team activity where they spend a the night here at the beach. Right. Head to Cape Henlopen for the day or something. You know, these, most of these girls are uh, in travel position and travel uh, teams. They're used to traveling. They're used to staying overnight elsewhere, so they don't mind coming down to Lewis. For them, Lewis is a short trip for a lot of these travel events they go to. 
Right. And here comes Newark Charter, I believe. He came and found us. That's awesome, Mike. So I think the one team I didn't ma manage to uh, find, so this is great. Let me uh, head across the table. So Newark Charter is coming over to interview with us. All right, let me get my cheat sheet for Jess Weller, right, Jess? And uh, Abby Carbajal joins, because that, Carbajal? Yeah, Carbajal? I didn't even take Spanish in school, but I know that that uh, silent uh, yes. letter, Dan, let me go back to my. Yeah, we'll start with Abby, sure, why not? Abby, uh, Jen, we just, uh, we, Jess, I'm sorry, we had you slide around the other side, we'll get Abby. Jason's gonna give you the, uh, the five, four, three, two, one kind of symbol. And, if you want to make sure we don't get killed, I don't know, you can do whatever you want. Okay. So uh, we're going to rely on your coach to keep us safe. Okay. So we're going to look right here. And Abby Carbajal, what year are you this year? I'm going to be a junior. You're going to be a junior. Now I'm going to get my, I have my information here, but it's not on my, I should have it with me in my hands. Um, here it is. So Abby, new our charter, uh, kind of a newer school. Yes. Uh, it's kind of come on the scene athletically, including in volleyball. What's that been like watching that program grow? It's been really great watching it grow from my eighth grade year to my junior year. We've grown so much as a team, built traditions, and really grown the program. So tell us who we should be looking for this year besides you. We should be looking for Chloe Rogers going right side. We're going to have a big block going there. And our new defense, we can practice a lot during practice, and we have lots of great defensive players this year. So you guys were 8-7 and seven last year and ran into Archmere in, in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. and they're always tough. Uh, yeah. You know, how, do you, how do we keep progressing and, and go forward this, this year? This year, we're just focusing on getting better each day, getting everyone better each day, and we're going to hope to make a return in the playoff and make a run. And uh, a tough conference you're in. How, mm -hmm. You know, is that, that's that got to make you guys better, even though you might want, there might be a night or two where you take mm -hmm. some lumps. Yeah, it definitely makes us a lot better. We come out each night knowing we could win or lose either team. It just depends on our mentality. So you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Awesome. Well, thanks for doing this. And uh, if you can hand the headset to your coach. Thank you. Thank you. Abby, look out. Here we go. Almost got us. Almost. Yeah, we've been dodging all day. It's a dangerous spot it's you're set up in here. <laughs> Jess, how many years at Newark now? Newark Charter? Oh, I think this is my fifth year there. Let's talk about the, uh, we asked Abby, let's talk about the progress that, that you've been able to make. Uh, with that program? Well, it's really exciting having a feeder school because we have a middle school there. So we have our middle school program um, help to, helping us to build the future. We have some um, raw talent coming out of the middle school, so we're really excited for that. Newark Charter, and, and because they've uh, progressed grade-wise, it seems like he has been perpetually young. But that's not really the case anymore, is it? It's not. We graduated our first senior class last year, so we're. this is the first time we've had to replace those seniors, so we really have a lot of spots up for grabs, and the girls are really rising to the occasion. Still working on the roster, or you, you have something in mind? We're, we're still working on the roster, actually. Yeah, it's exciting because you have so many people making everyone better. So. And we asked Abby, in a, in a conference as, as, as stacked as the Diamond State, how does Newark Charter kind of punch through and, and say, hey, don't forget about us, we're still here. You know, I think we just go in every game knowing that we're there and we can hang with anyone. And we just keep working together and keep stepping our game up. It's only gonna make us better playing those tough caliber teams night in and night out. And you mentioned, so you have your conference schedule. You also have uh, Ursuline and Paddle this year, Tattnall and uh, St. Mark. So between the conference and, and the, those four schools, uh, not too many nights off. No, we really wanted to get a team uh, a schedule together that made us perform night in and night out because you only get better if you're playing the best. So we tried to get everyone on our schedule that, you know, was willing to challenge us. So we're really looking forward to that. And tell us, just talk one minute about the support you're getting in the school community at Newark Charter. The school community is fantastic. Uh, we have a great um, booster club, parent support, um, day in and day out they're there figuring out what they can do to help us. So it's really nice to have the whole school, school community on board there. Well, Newark Charter's really come out and burst upon the scene, and you're doing a great job down there. Thanks for stopping by today, and good luck this season. Thank you very much. All righty, thanks. Jessica Weller from Newark Charter, thank you, and we will hope to see you down the line some point. Absolutely. Maybe at the Bob Carpenter Center, you never know, right? Thank you, Abby. Great. Well, thank you to Newark Charter for coming over here for hey, a couple Jason, interviews. Jason, let me duck under. I'm going to take my headset off for a second.
thank you for, uh, new, again, the New York Charter for coming out and giving us a few minutes. So uh, we want to thank New York Charter. And big things coming for New York Charter this year. I saw them last year in the playoffs. Like they said, they gave Ursula a match, and so it's pretty good. We, uh, we're trying to get some help with the administration password. I talked to a couple people that work here um, or have worked here recently. K Penn Logan School isn't even open yet. The teachers don't even have their iPads, and they're redoing the Internet inside the school. So that's the reason we may not be able to get on or haven't been able to get on. Um, and there is no administration password that, you know, the, the new one. Um, so we're working on that. We're still going to try to get live if we can. If not, we're just going to continue to to roll, record, and we'll put it on when we get up north. Right. So, but it's great volleyball action. Um, like you said, we've had quite a few balls coming to our living room, but and especially these girls are, are, are playing playing hard. Especially uh, since DMA, the two-time defending champs, got on the court. Man, they've been blistering balls into our living room. Uh, even during that New York Charter interview, uh, they were hitting some balls our way, and so. Uh, it's going to be an interesting year, and, and Cape's looking good here. It was the second time we've seen Cape today, so I think it's going to be a great year for volleyball. I keep on saying this today because it is that important. I, just because you're not in the top ten to start the year, any of these teams can win the state championship this year. It's that That's the talent in the state of Delaware. Absolutely. And that's why 302 Sports wants to bring you a bunch of volleyball this year because we know how important it is. And uh, these girls work hard. They play hard. And I was just taking a look. I was watching DMA. They don't look like they've lost a step. <laughs> no, graduated five starters, and, and they look just as good out here early in the year. And uh, it's interesting because we haven't seen any of them play before. No. So it's it, this is why we do these play days and scrimmages and go to practices because we want to give you the best information that we can get on these teams. And Start the season, right. And... DMA, the, like we said, two-time defending champs. They, they're they not going to give up their crown easily this year. And no, it looks like the girls that are coming in and filling in those spots are are just as talented as the girls that left. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, and every conference this year is strong. We talked about the independent. The, uh, DMA is in the Diamond State Conference that has Archmere, has Newark Charter, who we just interviewed, has Conrad, who we interviewed earlier today. So, it's got a lot of good teams in that conference, and so DMA just to repeat in that conference is going to be tough. Just be, uh, and and uh, play day is good for the officials too; they can work on their, their craft. Right, because I mean volleyball is. It, it amazes me that one guy controls the whole court. You know what I mean? I've always thought they should have somebody back here and back there for the outs, but I guess you can tell. Well, during the regular season, a lot of times it's the JV players that will call the the in, the uh, will be have a flag and yeah, they'll and stand and put in or out, in or out. Yeah. and then when they get the state tournament time, they do go for it, officials, which is the way to go because, like Len said, you it's hard. Any mistakes? It's hard to see from up in that chair, and then you also got subs, you know, substitutions. That's why you got the floor umpire over there on the left. He does the thing. It looks like Sue Heist is heading our way soon, so we will be hearing from the Ursula coach who lost to DMA in the finals last year. Uh, so that's going to be a good interview coming up for us. All right, Sue, so thanks for doing this for us. Jason, let us know if we're in the right spot. Good to go? Yep, beautiful. So, let's get your, uh, I pretty much don't need questions to ask you. Uh, last year, big year for Ursuline reaching the final. Just as an, uh, as an observer, I thought, I thought you had the talent, but I thought maybe you guys were developmentally a year or so away. You really surprised, surprised me. Did you surprise yourself? Getting that far? We um, we knew we had talented kids, but we um, had to be patient during the season, and they came along nicely, and, and um, they pulled it together near the end. I mean, it was just a nice reward for all the work that they had done. 
And um, yeah, I, I'm, you asked me if I was surprised. I wasn't really surprised because you could see it coming. Mm -hmm. It just that we had to wait for it. There's no, nobody ever questioned your, your team's talent, ever. I thought you guys had as much talent as anybody in the state, but a lot of young players on that team. You only had, I believe, uh, three seniors. Two. I remember right, two seniors. Two seniors. Um, speaking of which, one was your setter. Right. Uh, who, who's going to uh, be setting them up this year? Who's your setter uh, this year? We have uh, Cassie Markle, and we're looking at uh, Lauren uh, Boyson to set for us. And, and we all know some of the town you have uh, Corinne Fury and, and Sam Davis and Taylor Wright. Uh, anybody else that we should be looking out for? Maybe that kind of flew a little under the radar last year or is maybe new to the program? Um, our, our, our two middles uh, played last year and they've uh, gotten much better. Abby Sidlow and Kylie Knockett. Mm -hmm. um, good quick in the middle, can move to whether blocking or hitting. Um, really have improved quite a bit. So yeah, they're, they're, they're ones to watch also. We talked a little earlier about uh, getting to the final last year. Did your team come in I'm sure you don't let them come in with the thought, hey, we got there last year. You're going to have a target on your back this year a little more than usual, I yes. would imagine. Yes, we will. You say, um, that's not something you, have to, you don't have to motivate your players, do you? Well, you got you have to keep them focused. But, you know, this this year's team is not last year's team. You know, it's, it's always, though we only lost two people, it's always a different mix. And you have to uh, build that team chemistry and that trust in each other. And... Um, You've watched enough volleyball that you know it's not just skill. It's it's maybe 80% skill, and then the rest is that team unity. So um, a team has to improve together as it goes through the season. I think that's, that's in girl, boys sports and girls, but it seems more in the girls sports where the, the girls really are a, a unit, you know, kind of uh, togetherness. And more, not that the boys aren't, but you know what I'm saying. She's still got it. I know, uh, really. Know. I, can, I can bang <laughs> a ball back and do an but interview. But the girl, like you mentioned, the girls – when, when, when the girls get along, it seems like the teams just do that much better. Well, and, you know, I think it's also, too, in the girls' ball, go, girls volleyball, it's, it's um, there's more play. And guys' power is like, boom, plays over. Mm -hmm. You know, block it down, boom, plays over. But they, there can be rallies where you have – there's a lot of communication. There's a lot of stuff going on. So that might have something to do with it. So, as usual, Ursula, we're looking at, just at your schedule here. 11-4 last year, really good. I guess that schedule's really good. You say you start at Del Mar? Or yes. You're at Del Mar. Yes. That's a nice uh, short trip for you. And uh, your Catholic Conference, you also have friends, Wilmington Charter, uh, DMA, Newark Charter, and Archbishop. So uh, the usual um, meat grinder for the we Raiders. We have a hard huh? schedule. Yeah, we, the, the, the best teams in the state. And um, we picked up a, a team from uh, New Jersey, Pope Paul the Pope VI. Paul, yeah. so, um, so we're looking forward to that. But, you know, we want we want a hard schedule. We want to push ourselves. Um the girls are still working to, it's early in the season, you know, yeah. so we're trying to get that, that chemistry with us. Um, but w our, our goal every year, every game is to improve. So that's what we'll work towards. And uh, I know everybody wants, everybody wants to be holding the trophy at the end of the season, and I'm sure you're no different. Uh, but you said you, you really like to see the girls get better and, and, and grow and, as people and as players. Right, exactly. I mean, I think... Though we, we last year we had a great finals and and of course they were upset but afterwards they it, if they thought about it in reflection oh my gosh look how far we came yeah you know you have Amazing to look season. at not only as a team but look how far individually each player came so there has to be satisfaction in that so Raider Nation's ready to go we'll see we'll be we'll be out there <laughs> we'll be competing great well, thanks for doing this for us today and sure. being so accommodating as we uh as i'm ducking out of the way for nothing yeah uh, <laughs> not a problem we had plans and we just did, we just adjusted our plans right that's right everything's on the fly right that's right okay so sue thanks for doing this we're going to take a break get some messages from our sponsors and we'll be back right after this on 302 sports okay life's too short to hate your home remodel your home with the pros voted delaware's number one home improvement company Ferris Home Improvements has something for every homeowner at their new showroom on the corner of Kirkwood Highway and Harmony Road in Newark, Delaware. Explore products and layouts with the area's top designers. Touch and feel products that inspire your dream space. Ferris Home Improvements pride in the details make them the area's best in roofing, windows and doors, siding, decks, kitchens and bathrooms. Want a professional no pressure remodel? Go see the best at the Big Shamrock on Kirkwood Highway. 
Ferris Home Improvements, quality workmanship from a neighbor you can trust. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Solo Concepts is an award-winning restaurant group on the culinary coast with 10 locations. We're a chef-driven group. Come check us out. See you soon. Solo Concepts believes in the vision of our founder, Matt Haley, cook beautiful, simple food, develop the people we work with, and make the world a better place. Soto Concepts on the culinary coast with 10 locations from Lois, Delaware to Fenwick Island. Come check us out. Mr. Italian began his career in home finance in 2002 as a mortgage consultant. Since 2002, Brian has helped over 1,000 home buyers achieve their dreams of owning a home. Brian's knowledge of current market conditions and his detailed evaluation of buyers' finances ensures that each buyer will receive the best mortgage to fit their needs. Brian is often commended on how efficient and effortless he makes the mortgage process for everyone from first-time home buyers to investors to experienced buyers. For the loan that fits you, contact Brian today. Hooters of Newark is located at 136 Astro Shopping Center, Newark, Delaware. Come in day or night to watch your favorite teams and sports on our many TVs. It's a great, fun-filled environment that is kid-friendly. Our craveable food menu has all the appetizers, burgers, salads, tacos, seafood, you name it, as well as our world-famous Hooters wings, which are the official wings of 302sports.com. Remember, you can always order online to take home our world-famous wings. It's your couch, our wings. Unique Image opened for business in Wilmington, Delaware in 1979 with one focus, wowing our customers with great products and even greater customer service. 30 years later, we are still doing exactly that. Whether you're looking for marketing tools to promote your business, gifts for your employees or clients, or planning a special event, we're here with a voice of experience to help you every step of the way for your complete satisfaction. Visit our new showroom in the Milk Creek Shopping Center, 4577 Kirkwood Highway. Unique Image, you envision, we create. Life's too short to hate your home. Remodel your home with the pros voted Delaware's number one home improvement company. Ferris Home Improvements has something for every homeowner at their new showroom on a corner of Kirkwood Highway and Harmony Road in Newark, Delaware. Explore products and layouts with the area's top designers. Touch and feel products that inspire your dream space. Ferris Home Improvements pride in the details make them the area's best in roofing, windows and doors, siding, decks, kitchens and bathrooms. Want a professional no pressure remodel? Go see the best at the Big Shamrock on Kirkwood Highway. Ferris Home Improvements. Quality workmanship from a neighbor you can trust. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Solo Concepts is an award-winning restaurant group on the culinary coast with 10 locations. We're a chef-driven group. Come check us out. See you soon. Solo Concepts believes in the vision of our founder, Matt Haley, cook beautiful, simple food, develop the people we work with, and make the world a better place. Soto Concepts on the culinary coast with 10 locations, from Lois, Delaware to Fenwick Island. Come check us out. Mr. Italian began his career in home finance in 2002 as a mortgage consultant. Since 2002, Brian has helped over 1,000 home buyers achieve their dreams of owning a home. Brian's knowledge of current market conditions and his detailed evaluation of buyers' finances ensures that each buyer will receive the best mortgage to fit their needs. Brian is often commended on how efficient and effortless he makes the mortgage process for everyone from first-time home buyers to investors to experienced buyers. For the loan that fits you, contact Brian today. 
Hooters of Newark is located at 136 Astro Shopping Center, Newark, Delaware. Come in day or night to watch your favorite teams and sports on our many TVs. It's a great, fun-filled environment that is kid-friendly. Our craveable food menu has all the appetizers, burgers, salads, tacos, seafood, you name it, as well as our world-famous Hooters wings, which are the official wings of Frio2Sports.com. Remember, you can always order online to take home our world-famous wings. It's your couch, our wings. Unique Image opened for business in Wilmington, Delaware in 1979 with one focus, wowing our customers with great products and even greater customer service. 30 years later, we are still doing exactly that. Whether you're looking for marketing tools to promote your business, gifts for your employees or clients, or planning a special event, we're here with the voice of experience to help you every step of the way for your complete satisfaction. Visit our new showroom in the Mill Creek Shopping Center, 4577 Kirkwood Highway. Unique Image, you envision, we create. School, Mike Lang, Jason Winchell, Len Evans from 302 Sports. We're doing it on tape. We have uh, Kate Penlopen and DMA just about ready to wrap up here in front of us. They will be done. And after that, Jason, on court number one, which is right in front of us, will be DMA and Ursuline, it looks like, at 1210. That uh, looks like that would be a great match to see uh, the defending state champs against the defending runner-ups. And we will try to uh, grab Charity Hart and Jessica Charlier from St. George's and bring them in after that. Uh, back to the teams that are not here today. We're going to talk about, let's talk about Caravel first. Let's do Caravel. And uh, they are the team without a conference, as I call them. They are the one non-conference team that, that we have uh, highlighted on, on the uh, program today, or that we will highlight. So Caravel last year, two years ago, Jason, 15-0, and 0, but they lost in the first round of the playoffs. And last year they were not undefeated, but they were 11-4, and 4, again lost in the first round of the playoffs. So we talked to Coach Ray Healy last week. And they beefed up the schedule this year. And that was one of the things that he mentioned. So that, that they, when they, they – he, he couldn't do anything about it because of, the, because of their contract situation, but not, it's not the case anymore. Yeah, when they get, when they get to the state tournament – they hadn't played that tougher competition. He wants to play that tougher competition, so when they get to the state tournament, they're ready for it. So Caravel, in a non-conference situation, they are going to travel this year to St. George's and Tattnall. And, and then coming down to Bear is Tower Hill. Is going to be Tower Hill, Conrad, Friends, Red Lion, and they also play Apo out of the Flight A. And Apo was a tournament team last year, lost a few players, but uh, they will be in the mix in Flight A. So Caravel, we talked to uh, some of the players we talked to last year were three seniors. Cody Dillon, who was really their uh, their all-around do-it-all player. Uh, yeah, and she's tall, she's athletic, and she she'll uh, have Caravel ready to play this year. Cody's not as well known as some of the other hitters, players like uh, Danny Nathan and Emily Jerome, and uh, Corinne Fury, some of the the more the better-known players. She's kind of flown under the radar down there at Caravel, but she is a player. She is joined on the front line by Renee Hastings, a senior, and then in, in the back will be Tessa Laney, and those are the girls that we chatted with. Yeah, and they will, they will be uh, a good team to... Uh, Another one right at Jason Winchell. As, a, as I was talking about Car Caravel, a, a DMA player decides to send one my way. But the team block from Len Evans and Mike Lang on that one. And this game has wrapped up. Kate Penlopen playing all their games here on court number one. They'll be back in action in five minutes against the Raiders from Ursuline. We just chatted with Sue Heiss. And I believe it's DMA and Ursuline next. Did I say DMA? You said, uh, one Kate, here? You said Kate Penlopen now. 12-10 is, is DMA and Ursuline. Right. I'm sorry. Cape gets a break. They will be back here later on against Conrad. Is Cape's next after a, uh, a break. After the, we're going to play one more set of game matches, and then there's a 15-minute break for everybody, and we will have our last interviews, I believe, during that break, which will be Tower Hill will be the last one, and St. George's. So speaking of Ursuline, there's the man himself, Jamie Davis, whose uh, daughter Sam is not here today. His Taking other daughter, Sydney, is here today, so Ursuline's just stacked, loaded. So we mentioned Caravel, and they have a lot of seniors. Don't have the roster breakdown in front of me, but 
they always manage to uh, to get things done. Ray Healy's done a good job since he left Concord for uh, for Caravel a few seasons ago. Right. And then so in the Diamond State, another Diamond State team is Wilmington Charter. Is Wilmington Charter? Moved, moved, they moved to the Diamond State, Mike. That's a step up from the Flight A where they were last year. We mentioned the Diamond State, the deepest conference in, in the state. I don't think anybody really would question that. I mean, this team here in front of us in the white, Ursuline, may, may be, you know, there might be a team or two that overall conference strength, I think Diamond State by far is uh, is the strongest this year. Yeah, me, Len, Len and I were saying, Mike, while you were tracking down some players earlier, that the three conferences to watch out for are Independent, Diamond State, and Catholic, and I think those three We'll have probably 11, 12, 13 of the 24 teams in the in the state tournament this year. All right, volleyball is a one division sport, but basically all of those teams in those conferences are all would be division two teams if it was a two division sport, except for Padua um, and Wilmington Charter. So almost all the rest of them are smaller schools. It's proving you don't have to have a thousand kids or 1,200 kids in the school to have a quality volleyball program, as we've seen over the years with. Ursuline and their success in DMA last year and Archmere winning a couple seasons ago. So speaking of Wilmington Charter, we talked to Maddie Matheny. She's an all-state uh, outside hitter, 6'1". Uh, she can play all over the court and yeah. strength and finesse, just uh, the total package when it comes to volleyball. It's a good, it, it, like you said, Mike, it's a good, good conference from Upstate and downstate, so it, Diamond State is going to be a tough conference to watch this year. And um, Wilmington Charter is, I think, can probably win the conference. That's how talented they are, and uh, they they scheduled their they got a tough schedule. That's the pro that's going to be the problem with Wilmington Charter. Take a quick peek at the Charter schedule if I get to it real. I know they added Padua here. this year too. So that's yeah, we talked be to Coach Dave Stover, and he mentioned. He mentioned playing at that kind of schedule. They are um, out of conference. They're at Tower Hill uh, and at St. Mark's and Friends. At home, they have Archmere, Padua, uh, Ursuline, and Smyrna. That is, uh, uh, we talked about that when we first saw the schedule. Maybe, maybe the toughest schedule in the state. We said that about a few teams. The charter is definitely one of them. I know he said he wanted to get his athletic director after that, those, that first five games of the schedule. They are not an easy like I said earlier, we will be at Wilmington Charter for that Archmere game. It's our volleyball spotlight game of the week for that week early in the season. They open the season uh, at Tower Hill. At Tower Hill. Football, it's on a football Friday, but it's September 8th so far, scheduled September 8th. It's going to be uh, Wilmington Charter at Tower at the Little Gym at Tower Hill. They played last year on opening night. Uh, Fantastic match at, at Wilmington Charter, five-setter. I was fortunate enough to uh, catch that one. It was a two-hour-plus match, and uh, unbelievable. We saw Tower. We'll have Tower Hill later. But we saw Tower Hill just what what they would become later that season, 14 and one. And Wilmington Charter took them to five sets. It's a, a good team. And they got Maddie uh, Matheny, Aaron Michaelowitz. And Coach Stover mentioned some of the other players that we have. We don't have the roster right here in front of us. Yeah, and it, it's a pretty deep team. Uh, I believe one of the newcomers he said to watch out for was Antonia Br Browning. Who That's right, Tony Browning from uh, the soft. She's better known for her softball so pitching at Ursuline. She played last year at Charter before she got injured. She's a senior this year, and she will be a, a, a contributor for the force. Staying in the Diamond State, Jason, I was at Archmere Academy earlier this week, had a chance to speak with Lexi Kelly and uh, Coach Mary Pat uh, Quoka, and uh, lost five seniors at Archmere this year. But they uh, they have, again, a roster that is, is talented from top to bottom, led by the Kelly twins, Nikki and Lexi up front. Amy Thompson will be joining them in the front line. They uh, lost their setter, so we're, I think the setter we're looking at Sydney Nimatawalu. Yeah, yeah, that's all we need. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we gotta get 
two more teams interviewed live. And we so a uh, top ten. So look at Archbear, thirteen. Is, but that's what I'm saying. But how are we going to get these teams if, if they're playing now? You know, to do the interview. We're going to have to. They have a break. So maybe you want to do the top ten now, and we can shift it around. Okay. Yeah. Here, I'm going to talk about Archmer's schedule right here and some of the key players. They were 15 and three last year, 13 and two in the regular season. They lost to Ursum in the semifinals in a five-setter. Uh, so they have a good team. They're Absolutely. And their key players are Le seniors Lexi Kelly and Nicole Kelly, Amy Thompson, who's another senior, and then freshman. Hannah Wright is the player they gave us to watch out this year as a newcomer, and they're really stoked about the way she can play. But their schedule is brutal this year. <laughs> they, <laughs> yes, it is, Jason. They, they start with Smyrna. Then we, Mike and I were talking. They got Wilmington Charter in our volleyball spotlight game in the second week of September. Wow. Uh, and that's on the road. And then they're down here at Cape Henlope, which is not an easy travel. They got St. Mark's and Tower Hill. Newark Charter and DMA, all on the road. And Ursuline, all on the road. And then their home versus Conrad, Red Lion, Friends, and then Padua, Padua. <laughs> which on a football Friday is our volleyball game of the week that week. Right, because right, right. It, is, it could be one versus two in that match. Absolutely, so by, the, by the time the, the game rolls around. So it's unbelievable the, the their schedule. And like I said, they went 13-2 and two last year. It's going to be tough to go 13-2 and two with that. With a schedule like that, absolutely, Jason. And they added, like I said, they added Cape Hell Open. Uh, they've always played St. Mark's Tower Hill, but they added some uh, red line. They added red line this year. They added Padua. They added Friends. So it, it's going to be a tough schedule for them. And if they if they end up 13-2, and two, I'll be impressed. Yeah. I really will. As we are, like we said, in the Bombarded by balls. Balls everywhere. There's balls flying everywhere. They're, I mean, we're, we're in the hot zone. We can't help it. Um, yes. So, folks, if i got to stand up, jump, dive, kick, punch, I will do whatever I can to protect uh, the guys the guys with the headsets. And, Len, this, this is the match that we want to focus on today. It's the two ch DMA, the champion last year, and Ursula, the runner-up. They played in the state final. It was a five-setter. Uh, it was a classic. It, yeah, it, it was, was a classic. It was a classic. That's all you can say about that. And, um... So this is, it's good that we have them on the court. We can show you some action uh, as we get ready to interview some St. George's players and coaches. And uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to watch with DMA having five five players five. starters leave, but they have looked good so far in their matches that we've seen them. They yep. look like they haven't lost a step. Jason. Right, they haven't. New coach, I think she can She's a former Arsenal player who played under Sue Heiss. She's got them ready, rocking and rolling. Yeah, we're going to watch some of the action while we wait on uh, some St. George's uh, players and coach. St. George's, like we said earlier, moved from flight B up to flight A this year. So it will be interesting to see what their philosophy is moving from the flight B to the flight A. It's a whole different ball game. It is a whole <laughs> different ball game. A good dig right there. There's the set. Into the net it goes. So DMA will serve here. Figure why we got our eyes on the action. Padua will serve. Uh, it's DMA. Ursulin. Or Ar Ursulin. Ursulin serve. <laughs> the DMA's on the other side. Ursulin serve. Yes. Thank you, Len. Yep. I was wrong the first time, too. So... Now it's DMA. I said Padua. You said DMA. We yeah. were both wrong. Now it's Earth. Now, now DMA, DMA has the Now ball. DMA is serving now. Good dig there by Ursum. DMA gets the point. I 
like how it's always quiet when they get a serve. Yeah. Then, yay! Good jump serve there. <laughs> All right, and St. George's coach joining us. Okay, uh, we're gonna wait a few minutes until she finds. She's gonna find our uh, player to interview. What a good dig there, Jessica Charlier, the good. player that we're gonna interview, along with the coach from St. George's. Good dig there by Ursel as they come back to serve. I'm, I'm gonna right turn it over to Mike Lang, the volleyball specialist. He'll be taking over. I'll go back to producing. So here, here you go, Mikey. There's a good jump serve by Romero. All right, here comes. I put a different headset on, it fits differently. All right, so we're gonna start with Cherry. All right, uh, just, we're gonna look, Jason's gonna give you a look. Don't worry, you won't die. I haven't died yet. Here, I'll get on the other side if you want. Yeah, yeah, that works. Here, I'll take my headset off for a second. All right, so we're gonna get, uh, let me grab my cheat sheet. I got my. I had to cheat to do all this, uh, coach. Yeah, that's fine. I can't remember all this stuff off the top of my head. St. George's, St. George's. So we're joined by Charity Hart, the coach at St. George's Tech. Coach, I know I have wrote some questions down, but I know what I wanted to ask you. You were flight B champs last year, but you're not in flight B anymore. Yeah. Talk about the move up to flight A and what that means for your program. Uh, it's something that we're actually really excited about. Uh, just that uh, level of competition, and I think the girls uh, will really enjoy it. Just something a little new, a little different. But just we're looking forward to the move. Two definitely. seniors last year, so you see that you have a lot of veteran, or you have a lot of experience back Two, this year. Quite a few seniors this year, uh, uh, the most that I, I've experienced. So a few seniors and a couple other classmen. Still got a couple of lower classmen too, though. So, so I know you, you, you know who the teams are on Flight A. I don't know how many of them you've played in the past, but. Uh, Wilmington Charter is is out, yeah. so it's like uh, Apo I guess has been has been the uh, top returning team in that conference. Who in that conference do you really? I mean, you worry about everybody, but yeah. um, you know, when you're looking at the schedule, uh, is there games that you like? Well, I'm not sure you do. You probably don't want to say here, but um, <laughs> I mean, you know, well just to give us a little assessment of Flight A. Yeah, you talked uh, about Apo, and that's definitely something uh, that we're we're looking to improve uh, upon. We uh, haven't beaten them yet, so that's something we're, we're really kind of focusing on. But like you said, a lot of teams in that, in that conference, we haven't had a lot of chance to experience. So we're just excited to have the opportunity. To be the big uh, Middletown uh, yeah. rivalries this year between yeah. you, Middletown, and Apo. Uh, I don't know how many of those you play. If you, you said you haven't, played, you haven't beaten Apo. No, no um, I, not me personally. Uh, last year, I think we made a lot of improvement. So this year, I'm, I'm excited to, to see them again. So we have Jess here, but uh, who on your team should we be? If people are going to go out and watch St. George's, say, who are we going to be looking at? Probably everyone, honestly, on any given day. Uh, that's what I like about the team so much mm -hmm. is that we're pretty spread out and, and anybody can kind of catch fire and have a great game. So I, I'd say everyone. A lot of people are looking at hitters, but we got some pretty good DSs and, hat and setters too. So. so you travel to St. Mark's, travel to Conrad. You have Caravel yeah. and friends coming in to your place. Uh, I guess that just gets you ready for the for the postseason, gets your team better to play that, that level yeah. of competition. We, uh, we've been trying to make our level of competition with our schedule a little bit better every year. So that's what we're looking forward to, just tough competition. So a new conference and new opponents, uh, yep. some, a few new faces, mostly a pretty experienced team. Um, another playoff berth, I guess, is very possible for, for, for St. George's. Definitely right. play, hoping for it. <laughs> So, well, thanks for doing this for us, and good luck this season. Thank you. Appreciate it. And we're going to bring in Jess Charlier. Jess and I uh, met yesterday in the parking lot of St. George's Tech <laughs> on our on the way down here. So just bring that microphone up a little bit. I right, turn the headset around. Yeah, okay. We're going to go the other way. It's happened to all of us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. All right, Jess, thanks for doing this. Um, I have no questions for you, so we're gonna <laughs> we're just gonna wing it. All right. Uh, you are a senior this year. I am a junior. A junior this year. This year. Yeah. Um, just talk about the makeup of your team. How much experience they have on there? New faces that we sh that, uh, freshmen in there. Or well, we have one freshman that made varsity this year, Haley Loper, and then for the most part, we've all played together last year, and we're all pretty we're all pretty familiar with each other. So we're getting used to the new face and kind of adapting to it. 
What's it been like? Uh, you know, you knew a couple months ago that you'd be moving to Flight A. Uh, is that kind of rejuvenating, or do you think like there's new opponents in there? Or is it? Are you a little uh, apprehensive? What's the thought? I'm excited. I think because we played most of the teams before anyway in our last season. It just like wasn't as big of a game for us to win the flight. But I'm excited to play the bigger, better teams this year. One flight B last year got the automatic bid. Yeah. Uh, Red Lion got you in, in the playoffs. Uh, what are you looking for team-wise for St. George's this year? Uh, I think we're hoping to get into the state tournament again this year. That would be a really big thing for us, especially since we moved into Flight A. And we also really want to win the Flight A region this year, too. That would be a really big thing for us. What's the uh, atmosphere been around uh, the gym this uh, summer and, and as you've gotten into practice? It's been really exciting. We've all been pretty amped up for the season. We're all really ready to really just jump into it. Our first game against St. Mark's, always our big game. So it's just be exciting. And how's it gone this morning so far here at Cape? We, we've been doing good this morning. It's been, this is like a different gym for us, so we're kind of getting used to it, but we're all doing pretty well together. Ready to go, huh? Yeah, we're ready to go. Awesome. Well, thanks for doing this for us. Yep. Good luck, and uh, maybe we'll see you down the line. All right, thank you. Thanks, Jess. Jessica Char Charlier, right, from St. George's Tech. Talked to your dad last week. So thank you very much. Back with uh, Jason Winchell. So we will have Tower Hill at some point, I believe, is the I believe last I remaining believe, team, right? I believe they're coming up uh, when we get the break. When they come to the next break. They are playing right now on uh, our court here. But, Mike, let's talk about, I know you put a list together of some uh, important volleyball matches this year. What? Yeah, well, I have their, I don't have dates on me. That's the unfortunate thing, but. We just no. We just want some key games uh, from each team. Well, let's we can go down to the list here. Look, look at uh, at Smyrna. Uh, I think it was this. This is the list we're looking for here. So if we look at Smyrna. I'll come around the other side. Just take a peek at that real quick. I'll be. I have to swing around the camera here. Yeah, Smyrna. Like we said, they have St. Mark's Ch and Charter and Archmere. Some key games there. Also Tower Hill and Cape Henlopen. So that's always good. St. Mark's, they got friends in Ursuline. So name a few. Yeah, you mentioned, real quick, we could jump back at Smyrna real quick. They opened the season at home uh, against Archmere on uh, Friday, September 8th. So that's a, a great way to kick off the season. A couple good matches. We hate to see, uh, too, look at, here we go again. Too many matches on, a fr on Friday nights, but We've already had some jumbling with the schedule. We had pa uh, Padua Tower Hill's been moved, and I believe a couple other Padua matches. Padua Ursuline has been moved. So uh, we have been looking at the schedule, trying to put some where 302 Sports can be out there and bring these to you live. But, you know, it's always uh, schedule pending. That's why you have to check the 302 Sports website every day to check in case any game does get moved or... And we'll Time has been changed and stuff like that. Obviously, but we do a lot of heavy promotion on on Twitter, Facebook, about where we're going to be that Instagram, day. Instagram, that's right. You so. name it, you name it. Social media, 302 has it. And uh, any changes to our 302 sports schedule, we will get it out there for you guys. So, heading back to the, uh, I just want to mention Archer Smyrna on on day one of the season. So that's going to be a, a big match for uh, for the Hawks and the Eagles. A couple of different kinds of birds. So you mentioned St. Mark's, look at that, uh, all those tough games they have. Out of the conference, they've got to take take on friends. They're going to two friends. They're going to DMA, and they're going down to Red Lion. So uh, Nancy never has a night off no, in that uh, Catholic uh, conference. And we did Archmere while you were gone, so we know their their schedule is, is tough. Ursula, we talked to Sue Heist. We know her schedule's tough, but how about some Padua games? They got, I know they added Wilmington Charter this year that's never been on their schedule before. And I know Len and I were talking that even though the Padua Archmere game on October 20th is a football Friday, we're hoping to bring you that game. Uh, but, you know, we'll have to check our schedule. But that that could be a one versus two in that, that part of the sta season. That's a... A great matchup. Yeah, and home this year they have uh, friends. DMA last year, Padua traveled to DMA, and uh, 
and beat the Seahawks. And that was the DMA's first in-state loss in, I believe, about two seasons. Yeah, and started the DMA in a spiral they soon got out of uh, after a um, mid-season yeah, slump, we kind of. Pat was talents is unbelievable. They also, they uh, have, have Tattnall at home this year, and then the Catholic Conference, Ursula and St. Mark's, and they also and St. Elizabeth's, we don't forget them, is also in the conference. Yes. Um, so they have the six conference matches on they top of these tough ones. They added the Tattnall and Wilmington Charter, two newcomers. And both teams are rank, ranked in the top ten, so that's... Yeah, I believe they, they are not playing uh, Unionville from Pennsylvania. That was one of the teams they played the last yeah. few years. No, they added a PA team. It's the Academy of Notre Dame, and they're also playing... And they play Paul the six out of Virginia. Virginia that co travels to Delaware this year and plays at Padua on a Saturday afternoon in early September. So I'd really have to go down and look at the schedule, compare last year to this year to see what the differences are. But they have a tough one. That is the Catholic Conference. We looked at some of their games there. Yeah, we talked about Archmere earlier for the Diamond State, but there's some other tough Diamond State teams um, to name a few. We talked about charter strength and schedule, but how about Newark Charter? I know they added a few teams this year. So Newark, their conference schedule has been going to Red Lion, Conrad. They're also going to host, uh, I'm sorry, they're traveling to Ursuline. It's going to be a... Uh, a big one for them. I believe that is a new opponent for them this year. At home, down there on uh, Elkton Road, Padua, Tattnall, Wilmington Charter, and St. Mark's, in addition to conference foes. I won't charge the conference foes, Archmere and DMA. So they get a couple of, of teams to come down their way. Not an easy place to play down there in Newark Charter. I saw Padua there a couple years ago, and they, didn't, they won 3-0, three, three but... Newark Charter gave him a real good match, and that was with those seniors on that team. Right. As uh, Coach Weller just mentioned, uh, they just graduated their first senior class this past uh, this past spring, so there were no seniors at Wilmington Charter, uh, Newark, Newark Charter, Charter until last year. Right. Too many darn charters. Yeah, there, there's a lot of charter schools this year to keep track there's of. There's also the MOT Charter, I believe, right. and uh, a couple others. That was Corinne Fury on that kill. Yeah, that was good kill by her. And like we said, this is a rematch of the state championship going on in a little preseason scrimmage play day here at Cape Henlopen. Again, we want to thank Cape Henlopen for allowing us to come down here today. We want to mention the athletic director, Bob Salento, and Coach Tyler Coop for what they've done for us in the days have been in contact and said, well, you know, if you need anything, let us know. And that was Corinne Fury again. We'll be saying that a lot this season. Yeah, we're going to say that name a lot when we cover Ursula games. And she is incredible. Uh, Mike, we know two of their better players, Sam Davis and Taylor Wright, are not here today. Not here. Taking SATs. I'm looking. I see Abby Rizidlo. She mentioned Abby. She's standing there on the sidelines. And they have... Uh, couple other uh, seen, uh, players that Kylie Knockett was another one that Sue mentioned. I know. Uh, <coughs> Kylie's a sophomore. Abby's a uh, When we talked to sophomore, I believe. Sam Davis last week, she mentioned a freshman too, Brown. Ava Brown. To watch, uh, keep an eye out for. And then the other Davis, uh, Sydney. Sydney Davis. So there's some. It's going to be worked into the rotation a little more this year. Wow, nice. Nice dig there by Corinne Fury, just showing her all-around game as she dives to her right, save that point. Save the uh, save the ball, the point went to DMA. So we uh, Archmere, we looked at their schedule, they start with Smyrna. They are here, Cape Henlow open in about a month. Yeah. Look out, here we go. Len and I talked about that. Their, their schedule uh, is tough. Uh, we went, went game by game, and we do not see them going 13-2 this year with that schedule. Eight, eight really tough road matches. Yes, they're, they're, road, they're gonna do a lot of traveling. They gotta come down here to Cape Hen Open. Wow, a nice dig. The people digging DMA's grave might be a little uh, premature, you know? Absolutely. And like I said, even if they're not in the top 10, they, they could be a team to reckon with this year.
That's a great serve there, Burson. So we had Comrade on earlier, Coach Skinner and uh, Alyssa Fayville. Their non-conference includes road trips to Tattnall, Caravel, Tower Hill, and here, Cape Henlopen. And they are going to be home against Polytech. Polytech probably the third best team in the Henlopen North after Smyrna and Cape. They also have uh, St. George's at home and in their conference games at home. So you're gonna be going into the Wolves' den. It's not gonna be easy over there. Yeah. Great atmosphere, Conrad, too. They they do a great job of uh, getting the students out, and there's a lot of energy in that building. Yeah, a lot of that, a lot of energy, in, and the Wolf's Den, I call it. And this has been a great match. And there's a. Kill. Don't know all the Ursuline girls off the top of my head just yet. No, they're not. This is just a play day. They're not wearing uniforms. That's an ace. So we're going to watch a little bit of, of volleyball. we got to bring in Tower Hill, and we got to reveal our top ten, right? Yes, yeah, so we still got a little bit, a little of time bit more to go. Thank everybody for their for their patience. We had planned on uh, on going live today, and the internet gods had different ideas. It's wow, nice uh, pancake there, and a block Great by that Raiders front line. They have some height too. One more big play day, Jason. Uh, September first, a Friday. It is the Archmere play day hosted by Tattnall. Tattnall has two gyms and they uh, have air conditioning, so that will be less than a, about a week before the season opens. So if you want to see these teams after a couple more weeks of uh, practice and experience, it'll be at uh, well, that's next Friday. Tattnall. Next that's Friday, that is correct. Only one more week of practice. And then a uh, week before the season opens. Yes. Yeah, it's two more weeks of practice. One, one more week of practice, get you to Tattnall on Friday. And then one more week before the season the opens season on opens. September 8th. So, yeah, we want to do a little more. That's in. We're going to do some more live volleyball this year for, on 302 Sports. We had a good time doing the state championship match last year from the top of the Bob Carpenter Center with uh, Arch, uh, I'm sorry, Ursuline and... Uh, DMA, DMA Archer and Tower Hill in the consolation match with the matching green uniform, so made things a little difficult. So we do have Mike Sachs coming on in a few minutes. And Mike's going to bring uh, uh, one or two players with him. There's a nice uh, kill attempt. Good dig there, there dig. by Ersel. And they get the point out of it. And I've been impressed by Ursula so far in the two play days I've seen them play at. Last week at, at Friends and this week here at Cape Henlope. And they've, they've been good. And last week they went up against Padua at the Friends play day. And Ursula rattled off about six points in a row. And then Padua rattled off six points in a row. So it's been pretty good. Yeah, we can talk about that friend's play day. And that is very early. That's only about five days into the practice. But Not I thought, even. Yeah, they started on Tuesday. So it's uh, four. It was four days, and some teams had not even finished tryouts yet. This one's going to come right at us. And boom. So no, they hadn't, hadn't picked the roster. We still we noticed a few coaches today saying they were, they were you know, had to make final decisions. But, that, but they generally know who they're going to be going to war with. But at that uh, at that play day last week, I thought Paddle looked really good, and I thought St. Mark's was pretty impressive too. Yeah, but uh, and like Red Lion, yeah. I thought Red Lion was Red really Line. good. Uh, Red Lion. Speaking of Red Lion, uh, we talked about them earlier to, uh, today. I don't think we have yet. Well, let's bring up Red Lion while we have a, a few minutes here in this match. So they're new to the Diamond State Conference. Uh, a, another new team with Wilmington Charter. 
they are a good team. They didn't even have Molly Betters was not there for one of their better players from last year. So Molly was not there, and they still had an, ex an excellent day at Friends. Third, uh, 12 and three in the regular season last year. Uh, lost in this second round to Friends. Molly Betters is one of the players to look for, along with Morgan Mendick and Hannah McGarvey, some others. Uh, we, had, we did talk to Coach Dan Betters. He right. mentioned a few others that we would hear from in that interview. Uh, they're scheduled this year out of conference. They're at Caravelle, and they're home against Tattnall, St. Mark's, and Tower. So it's going to be a, uh, a a step up for Red Lion to see if I don't want to say if last year was for real. They're a very talented team, and they had a great day last weekend. But when they get into that that Diamond State grind, killer over schedule. We'll see every night. There's there's really no breaks on their schedule. But the Lions are uh, they're a good team and. They're going to win their share of games, and uh, I would expect to see them back in the tournament in a, a couple months. Nice kill there. DMA. Uh, people some doubts about DMA, but they look pretty good. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm one of them. Maybe. And they notice the shirts they're wearing. We're not rebuilding. We're reloading. So yes. they're, they're confident. Len mentioned that earlier uh, to me when we were not on the air and said that he saw the shirts, and they're awesome shirts. Just uh, another new direction. Uh, it's not not easy going uh, to change the coaches again. But Jen Johnson's a veteran coach. She's been around uh, Padua since she's worked for a really successful program at Padua. She turned around that Newark program. He said they won 10 matches last year. Yes. Uh, did not did they make tournament? I do not. They were just short of the tournament. Yeah, I believe. Not enough points to get in, but a, a great job by by Gen Volleyball. It's not really been a prominent sport in Newark, but she uh, she's doing a great. She did a great job in Newark. Now has moved farther north up to uh, DMA. DMA will be opening a new facility in a couple of years. Yeah. And so Jen will be taking him into the new building. We love DMA, but the, not an optimal situation uh, gym-wise over there. It's loud. That's yes. one thing. It is very loud. It is loud. Good kill there by DMA. But it would be good to have, uh, when they get the new building, it would be awesome because they can get more fans in there, more students in there, and it will be a, a better atmosphere for them. More spectators equals more, you know, uh, better atmosphere. Not the they they do what they can and yes. it's, it's a loud loud building. It's over a there. loud environment. It, it serves as a good home gym. There's a nice save there. We got a free ball, but just to uh, manage to keep that ball in play. Wow, and that's a nice dig on Fury in that one. So Jen Johnson's got them playing very well. Yeah. Nice uh, overhand dig. Not many people know this, but their JV team last year was outstanding and. Now they're cut. They got to come up and play in the varsity level. And look at that. They they play. They're playing great defense today. I believe that is going to. An no, player. no, we have an injury. We don't want to see an injury at any time. No. Especially at a play day. Let's look at the fans over here. So they wrapped up on the court next to us. We will track down Mike Sachs from Tower Hill. Put him on the hot seat. So we swing back over here. There's Ursuline, and we have. She is up and walking, and says she's fine. Now she's laughing it off, so I yes. think we're good. Let's go back to the court. Should be just about done. We'll get Tower Hill, and I think believe we're going to be uh, hitting the top ten after that, aren't we? Right. Top ten. I don't even know who they are. It's that secret. It is a secret top ten. That secret, Jamie. We don't even know who the top ten is. Top ten brought to you by Jamie Davis. He's begging out. Well, there goes Pam Coop. We can't get her either.
assuming their laptop is down. Yeah, that's the purpose of putting it down. Ours is on serve here as, like Mike said, this match should be wrapping up. Yeah, they're finished over on the other two courts. I wonder if it's uh, because of the injury they're giving them some. Well, uh, Sue's not really paying attention. She doesn't wear a watch, so I wish she on her right hand. Yeah, she's got a watch on, but she's not looking at it. You know, Sue, she'd go all day. Yes. They do have a break, so she, what's the surprise they played the whole break. Yeah, I think they'll be playing right through the break. Nice serve. And that's going to be into the net. And I believe, I thought we might be done, but we are not. Nice block. It does land out of bounds, but nice defense there from DMA. Just kind of maybe turned his hands a little bit toward the center of the court. Good crowd here today, Jason. A lot of parents down. You know, who, nobody objects to a trip down here. You can come down and if you get out early enough, you can drive the mile to Cape Henlopen State Park. Right. And the Dover Air Force Base having the air show today and tomorrow, so maybe some people are going to do that. We had the field hockey play day this morning. I believe still wrapping up about now. Well, yeah, it must be because those fields are going to be taken over by uh, soccer, soccer teams. So three play days on hand here in Lewis today. And there was two uh, scrimmage here last night, football. And that looks like Tatnall. to see if we can tr figure out where our other coach is. It's a tandem. They just finished scrimmaging Tower Hill. We're going to watch a little volleyball action here. We're going to see if we can track down Mike Sachs. Uh, we will take a break and be back right after these messages. Good idea. Life's too short to hate your home. Remodel your home with the pros voted Delaware's number one home improvement company. Ferris Home Improvements has something for every homeowner at their new showroom on the corner of Kirkwood Highway and Harmony Road in Newark, Delaware. Explore products and layouts with the area's top designers. Touch and feel products that inspire your dream space. Ferris Home Improvements pride in the details make them the area's best in roofing, windows and doors, siding, decks, kitchens and bathrooms. Want a professional no pressure remodel? Go see the best at the Big Shamrock on Kirkwood Highway. Ferris Home Improvements, quality workmanship from a neighbor you can trust. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Swartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Solo Concepts is an award-winning restaurant group on the culinary coast with 10 locations. We're a chef-driven group. Come check us out. See you soon. Solo Concepts believes in the vision of our founder, Matt Haley, cook beautiful, simple food, develop the people we work with, and make the world a better place. Solo Concepts on the culinary coast with 10 locations from Lois, Delaware to Fenwick Island. Come check us out. Mr. Italian began his career in home finance in 2002 as a mortgage consultant. Since 2002, Brian has helped over 1,000 home buyers achieve their dreams of owning a home. Brian's knowledge of current market conditions and his detailed evaluation of buyers' finances ensures that each buyer will receive the best mortgage to fit their needs. Brian is often commended on how efficient and effortless he makes the mortgage process for everyone from first-time home buyers to investors to experienced buyers. For the loan that fits you, contact Brian today. Hooters of Newark is located at 136 Astro Shopping Center, Newark, Delaware. Come in day or night to watch your favorite teams and sports on our many TVs. It's a great, fun-filled environment that is kid-friendly. Our craveable food menu has all the appetizers, burgers, salads, tacos, seafood, you name it, as well as our world-famous Hooters wings, which are the official wings of 302sports.com. Remember, you can always order online to take home our world-famous wings. It's your couch, our wings. 
Unique Image opened for business in Wilmington, Delaware in 1979 with one focus, wowing our customers with great products and even greater customer service. 30 years later, we are still doing exactly that. Whether you're looking for marketing tools to promote your business, gifts for your employees or clients, or planning a special event, we're here with the voice of experience to help you every step of the way for your complete satisfaction. Visit our new showroom in the Mill Creek Shopping Center, 4577 Kirkwood Highway. Unique image, you envision, we create. Life's too short to hate your home. Thanks for doing this. Uh, you have, what, you guys went 14 and 1 last year. Um, I'm going to start with the, with the uh, first question I was going to ask you. I was going to do the last one. The 14 1 last year, great season for you guys. Uh, dropped a real tough one in the semis. How do you bounce back from, from that? I know it's disappointing, but you can't, you can't dwell on it. How do you bounce right. back from that? Um, it, it was a bit disappointing, obviously. But, um, but for us, um, for us to go ahead and just get uh, get even a, a third place or fourth place finish is a big deal. Uh, third place finish was the second best in our school history, mm -hmm. so that was a big accomplishment for us. And uh, for Tower Hill to be playing at the Bob in any capacity in years past would be a big deal. So we were excited to get that chance. And you guys had a finals appearance a couple years ago, I believe, right? Right. That senior class last year was the first team to ever play at the Bob, and they had a second place as freshmen and a third place when they were seniors. Nothing wrong with that, right? No, not at all. So we know you're big, too. We have your daughter, Maddie, and Alex Thompson. Uh, but they're not the only ones on that team. Tell us uh, who we should be looking for this year. Yeah, not at all. Um, so last year we had made some switches, and we moved Marie Freebury to our right side. Um, that's really kind of after our one loss where we had some big wins. Um, she predominantly was a super strong blocker last year, but now her offense has improved, so we expect to see her getting more kills uh, from the right side. So we'll spread our offense around a little bit more. Um, we, uh, we lost our setter who to graduation, yeah. Ashley, who did a great job. That happens. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, but we're really excited. Uh, Haley Velasquez came in. Uh, she's a freshman. Um, set this past year in club ball and is, is doing a, a remarkable job for us. So we're really excited to see how she progresses. So you guys were obviously had uh, the, just the one of the friends got you once last year. Uh, you defeated Paddle at their place, which was an incredible uh, – a uh, feat for you guys. You're in, in the, the independent conference. It's a little bit different format this year because you added Wilmington Christian and there's a tournament at the end. But you guys have, uh, you're at Smyrna, at Caravel, at Red Lion, and in, at home you have Wilmington Charter, uh, Archmere, Padua, and Conrad. In addition to your conference schedule, um, are you trying to kill these girls? or? Would, <laughs> and I know everyone's play as bit tough a schedule as you can. I imagine that's the whole philosophy right. there. Yeah, we wanted to get as tough a schedule as we could. With having one more team in our conference, playing everyone twice was really going to limit the number of games we could get outside our conference. So we switched to playing them once, and we're going to have this mini tournament at the end, uh, conference tournament, which I think is going to be great for the kids and getting ready for the state tournament. So we're really excited about that. Uh, it made it tough because we had a lot of, of matches to add. It, it didn't fill up with everyone's schedule. Uh, but we're excited to have Smyrna, Carabell, and Conrad added to the schedule. So it should be good competition. Opening night at your place this year, Wilmington Charter, a rematch of that at opening night last year with an incredible five-setter that I was lucky enough to, to get to. Uh, that's a pretty good way to open the season, I would imagine. It. You know, it is, although I'm not sure uh, Wilmington Charter or Tower Hill is thrilled to play each other first <laughs> match. You're really not sure what to expect, um, but it's always a great match, and uh, they have some tough players, some players that are real tough to stop, so um, we, we jump right into it from uh, day one. So who do we have with us today? Um, so we have two of our three co-captains along with Maddie Sack. It's Alex Thompson, who's our other outside, and Abby Carpenter, who's our libero. Um, Abby kind of stepped up last year as one of our primary passers and was one of the keys to our success last season. Well, Abby, why don't you step up here and uh, put the headset on. Thank you, Mike, and good luck this season. We'll, we'll run into you down the line. Abby, you're good? Yeah. Okay, thanks for joining us. And uh, what year are you? I'm a senior. A senior. So uh, how many seniors on the team this year, do you know? Um, I think there's like five of us, four or five of us. It's a pretty veteran team. And you, you yeah. Obviously replacing some, some really good, talented girls from yeah. last year. Uh, how do you do, you know, is, it, is that, are you like, man, I don't, know, I don't know if I'm ready for this, or you build up to this and you're ready to go? Um, I think it's going to be a very good year. Obviously, last year, it's going to be tough to beat from last year, but we're going to work really hard, and I think it's going to be a good season. That's only the fourth or fifth ball that's hit me today, <laughs> so we're, we're good. Um, 
When you look at that schedule, do you ever turn around and ask him what he's thinking? Um, or do you, do you want to play those teams? I want to play all the teams. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't underestimate anybody. We have to work hard and just see what, see what happens. 14-1 last year, one of the, uh, maybe the best regular season in, in Tower Hill history. Uh, how do you, I mean, to build upon that, you, you made it to the semis last yeah. year. There's only one other place to go, right? And that's, yeah. the, that, that's the goal is to get there and, and to win this time. And I, I imagine yep. that's, that's what drives you guys. Yes, for sure. How, how motivated are you guys this year? Um, we're really, really wanting it. Mm -hmm. We're just going to hope that we can pull through with it this year. Awesome. Well, thanks for doing this. Yeah, you hand thank that you off so to much. Alex, and we'll. Uh, Alex, thanks for joining us. You're our last interview here today, uh, so we're gonna have this uh, on at some point because because we are. <laughs> That's why we came down. Talk about you and Maddie, one of the maybe the most imposing front lines in the state. How's that? Do you ever like sit back and think, man, how did this happen? Um. Uh. No, I don't. Uh. I think it's hard to compete with a lot of the other uh, schools, especially Charter, and their front line is very strong as well. And it's always fun playing with Maddie. I mean, we like to compete against each other, so, yeah. So you two are doing the uh, knocking the ball down, and uh, how important it is to have a, a set. I knew you had um, uh, Ashley mm -hmm. last year, and she's, she's moved on. But so working with a new setter, how's that uh, to take just practice and getting in rhythm and learning each other's tendencies? Uh, yeah, so Ashley last year was a major part of our whole team, and um, so it was really hard when we lost her, but this year Haley has really stepped up, and she's amazing. So it hasn't been hard to come in and get the right tempo. She's no, she with the program last year? No, she's a freshman. She's a freshman. Yes. Any other uh, any other little kids still a freshman we should <laughs> be looking for? Uh, no, Haley's our only freshman, but we have some uh, of the other, our, our teammates, uh, JV, that have stepped up. So... so Tower Hill, you go uh, a really good year, athletic for Tower for the school as a whole last year. Mm -hmm. uh, how how much fun was it for you to be to have the volleyball program be a big part of that? Um, it was definitely very fun, and I liked how our all student all, all our students stepped up and came out to all our games, and um, it was just an amazing season last year. And you had the uh, your your soccer team won a state championship, yes. and your tennis team, and uh, yeah, and uh, field hockey came second. Field hockey so. was in second, so it was a. And you guys were third year. in the state, so a big year for uh, for the green and white, huh? Yes, very big. We were out of Tower Hill yesterday, and they're all working hard at football and yes, soccer. Yes, definitely. Out there. <laughs> There's another one. We got the soft spot, so we're good. <laughs> so um, you guys are starting against Wilmington Charter in a couple weeks. Uh, uh, how, how pumped are you to get started? Um, it's going to be a tough game, like always, but we're working very hard, and we're all we're, we're meshing well together, so it should be a good first game. Thanks for doing this, and uh, good luck Thank this you. season. We'll, we'll see you at some point, I am very sure. Thank you. We're going to take another commercial break and be back on the 302 Sports Volleyball Preview Show. Life's too short to hate your home. Remodel your home with the pros voted Delaware's number one home improvement company. Ferris Home Improvements has something for every homeowner at their new showroom on the corner of Kirkwood Highway and Harmony Road in Newark, Delaware. Explore products and layouts with the area's top designers touch and feel products that inspire your dream space. Ferris Home Improvement's pride in the details make them the area's best in roofing, windows and doors, siding, decks, kitchens and bathrooms. Want a professional no pressure remodel? Go see the best at the Big Shamrock on Kirkwood Highway. Ferris Home Improvement's quality workmanship from a neighbor you can trust. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Solo Concepts is an award-winning restaurant group on the culinary coast with 10 locations. We're a chef-driven group. Come check us out. See you soon. Solo Concepts believes in the vision of our founder, Matt Haley. Cook beautiful, simple food, develop the people we work with, and make the world a better place. Solo Concepts on the culinary coast with 10 locations. From Lois, Delaware to Fenwick Island, come check us out.
Mr. Italian began his career in home finance in 2002 as a mortgage consultant. Since 2002, Brian has helped over 1,000 home buyers achieve their dreams of owning a home. Brian's knowledge of current market conditions and his detailed evaluation of buyers' finances ensures that each buyer will receive the best mortgage to fit their needs. Brian is often commended on how efficient and effortless he makes the mortgage process for everyone from first-time home buyers to investors to experienced buyers. For the loan that fits you, contact Brian today. Hooters of Newark is located at 136 Astro Shopping Center, Newark, Delaware. Come in day or night to watch your favorite teams and sports on our many TVs. It's a great, fun-filled environment that is kid-friendly. Our craveable food menu has all the appetizers, burgers, salads, tacos, seafood, you name it, as well as our world-famous Hooters wings, which are the official wings of 302sports.com. Remember, you can always order online to take home our world-famous wings. It's your couch, our wings. Unique Image opened for business in Wilmington, Delaware in 1979 with one focus, wowing our customers with great products and even greater customer service. 30 years later, we are still doing exactly that. Whether you're looking for marketing tools to promote your business, gifts for your employees or clients, or planning a special event, we're here with the voice of experience to help you every step of the way for your complete satisfaction. Visit our new showroom in the Mill Creek Shopping Center, 4577 Kirkwood Highway. Unique Image, you envision, we create. Life's too short to hate your home. Remodel your home with the pros voted Delaware's number one home improvement company. Ferris Home Improvements has something for every homeowner at their new showroom on the corner of Kirkwood Highway and Harmony Road in Newark, Delaware. Explore products and layouts with the area's top designers. Touch and feel products that inspire your dream space. Ferris Home Improvements pride in the details make them the area's best in roofing, windows and doors, siding, decks, kitchens and bathrooms. Want a professional no pressure remodel? Go see the best at the Big Shamrock on Kirkwood Highway. Ferris Home Improvements. Quality workmanship from a neighbor you can trust. Back at Cape Henlopen, Jason Winchell and Mike Lang. Here we go. Jason, it's come to the uh, that time of the day. They're still playing volleyball, but we have reached the end for the uh, top 10, preseason top 10 for 302 sports. Yeah, this is the countdown that we've been waiting for. Uh, we're going to start at number 10, and we're going to go the Caravel Buccaneers come in at number 10. Caravel coached by Ray Healy, 11 to 4 in the regular season, lost to Conrad in the first round. Number 9, the Conrad Red Wolves. Red Wolves here on the court in front of us. Jen Skinner is a coach, 11 and four in the regular season. Lost to the eventual champion, DMA, in the second round. Number eight, the Tattnall Hornets. Tattnall's coach is John Evans. They were also 11 and four in the second, uh, in this regular season. They got to the quarterfinal and they lost to Archmere. Number seven. The Wilmington Friend Quakers. Quakers 10 and 4, 14 game regular season. Barb Fitzgerald is their coach. Thanks to Barb coming on earlier. They also reached quarterfinal where they lost to Conference Pro Tower Hill. Number six, the Wilmington Charter Force. Force are coached by Dave Stover. They went 10 and 5 last year and they also lost to DMA. They were in the quarterfinal round. Number five, the St. Mark's Spartans. Flew under the radar yesterday, but or yet last year, but no longer the Spartans are back. Nancy Griskowitz is the coach. They were nine and six in the regular season, but better than that, and they reached the second round where they lost to Wilmington Charter. Number four, the Padua Pandas. Trying to make the step up, uh, another step, Lauren DiSabatino, has been the coach of Paddle for a few years now. They were 13-2 in the regular season, Jason. They lost to Ursuline in the quarterfinals. They look to go further this year. Number three, the Tower, Tower Hill Hillers. We just talked to Tower Hill, Mike Sachs, Abby uh, Cunningham, and Abby Carpenter, I'm sorry, and uh, uh, Alex Thompson. Yes. 14-1 and one in the regular season. He took DMA to five sets in the semifinal. Another uh, great semifinal down at St. Mark's. Number two, 
the Archmere Alks. Always in the conversation, Archmere coached by Mary Pat Quoka, 13 and two in the regular season. They also reached semifinal, also went to five sets, and they lost a tough one to Ursuline, but they'll be back. Number one, the Ursuline Raiders. Yeah, I don't know if too many people are surprised by this pick. Ursuline has the talent. They have the coaching with Sue Heiss. 11 and four last year in the regular season with a very young team. They're bringing back so much. They got to the uh, final last year against DMA, and DMA was able to take them out in five sets for uh, the final round with the five last year. It was an awesome match at the Bob Carpenter Center. And Mike, that's our top 10, but I just want to get out there. Delaware Military Academy, the defending champs. The reason they're not in our top 10, and they're gonna prove us wrong, I think, during the season, but they graduated five seniors and have a new coach coming in. Uh, we saw them here today and they played really well. Uh, also just outside was Cape Hell Open, Smyrna, Redline, That's right. all very good teams. That's why this is a preseason top 10 because it's gonna change weekly in a competitive thing like the volleyball. And you know, the schools just uh, get out there and play and they can tell us why they belong in the top, they can show us why they belong in the top 10 and and we'll see, uh, I'm so excited to get the season started on September 8th. It's gonna be a, another fantastic season. I think it's more balanced uh, than it's ever been since we've been following high school volleyball the last uh, several years. And there's more than just that three or four teams at the top. Like last year, everybody thought DMA would be a dominating team. And there were a few surprises along the way, but DMA, after they regrouped, got their stuff together, was a dominating team. So uh, we're excited, ready to go, and 302 is excited to, to bring you as much high school volleyball as we can. Speaking of 302, I just want to give a, let everyone know our first game uh, will be September 14th. Archmere, who's the number two ranked team, against number six, Wilmington Charter, at 5 p.m. Uh, again, check our website for daily updates in case the match gets changed and, and our rest of our September schedule. It will be out soon, so uh, we want to thank everyone for joining us here tonight, today, at Cape Hen Open High School. Mike, any final thoughts before we sign off here? Well, I just mentioned earlier, just, just the quality of volleyball just keeps continuing going up here in Delaware, and it's so much fun to see and uh, to get to know these, these girls and their coaches and the parents. Uh, they really appreciate the attention that volleyball is getting from, not just from the media, but from just around the state, and it's, it's great to see they do. A, they put a lot of work into this, and it's good to see them uh, get recognized. And I'm happy to play a part, whatever small one I can can play. And I'm excited for this season. And before we sign off, I just want to thank Len Evans, uh, him, myself, and Mike have been running around trying to get some teams and footage for you. Uh, Len Evans is always the behind the, the the camera and running the camera, producing, doing even talking here earlier today and I just want to give him a shout out because he works his butt off to bring you the best coverage that we can for high school sports and without him none of us are successful. Yeah and also uh, the people here at Cape Penlopen for putting us right in the middle of the action sometimes too close to the action and, uh, and Tyler Coop and, and, and the athletic director Bob Salento so thanks uh, for everything they've done and I think that's going to wrap it about up right Jason? 